Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to our series, Slavery, Sin, and Salvation. In today's episode, let's discuss how to remedy um, the problem of slavery long term. Um, if you go back and you, you watch some of, some of the videos that we've made in the past regarding slavery, um, I have posited that slavery is the great sin of the Ummah and that this is a, uh, something that we need to remedy. And it is really unhealthy to be finger pointing. We should always seek truth and to understand the fullness of any issue. But slavery is the ultimate Reba. There is nothing that is, is more usurious than taking the, uh, taking the labor, the time, the energy from a human, from a human for any reason hands down and people have lied about the prophets since the beginning of time so if you see things about prophets suggesting that they were slaveholders and engaged in encouraging slavery then these are traditions that need to be checked very thoroughly and very closely um, if there is any potential because the Quran actually tells us that there have been Walis and Nebis peace be upon them that have been enslaved think about the sin that that brings upon the slaveholder of a Wali or of a Nebi um, and it is very useless. So go back and check what, check the argument that I laid out previously. Now this still leaves the issue. Like I'm, I'm actually blown away when, when I see these videos from Muslims that are, that are apologizing for evil. Slavery is evil hands down. It's never a good thing. It's not a comeuppance. It's not something beneficial. Um, and if you've got some darkness in your heart and you're making excuses for it and desiring it, then this is something that you need to seek Allah's guidance on. Um, because it is a very serious sin. It is one of the greatest of sins, in fact. Um, you cannot be a follower of Nebi Musa, alayhi salam, and desire to enslave others. This is highly problematic. Now, when it comes to the whole slavery issue, uh, I'm amazed when I look and I see people arguing about who, who did it worse? The Western Christians? The Muslims? Was it the Jews? And it seems like all, all three groups did tremendous evil across space and time. And yes, slavery has also been universally, it's been practiced all across the world. And very rarely have there been abolitionist movements to eliminate slavery or even minimize its impact. And um, we need to honor those who have minimized it and ended it uh, wherever, where, you know, wherever it has taken place. And we need to see things accurately. It's difficult because so many historical records have been destroyed. So many libraries have been burnt and trashed. And this was by design. Devils don't want us to know our true history, our accurate history, and have inserted many dirty things into our historical narratives to make us feel guilty for things which, we're not, we, which we shouldn't feel guilty about, uh, which we weren't to be blamed for, and other things which we should consider and we should seek to rectify and remedy as they really were problems within our various communities. So these various communities that engaged in any aspect of slavery, how do we deal with these things? First off, we need to see things clearly. We also need to be committed to justice. Seeing clearly is just because we need to be honest about the materials, about what actually happened, and we need to be honest with ourselves um, and see what we actually um, desire in our hearts and uproot that which is, is evil and selfish um, in its expression. And so one of the things we can do to, uh, to rectify and remedy the situation is we must end all slavery forevermore. All tyranny, all oppression, all types of slavery and enslavement must be ended forever and ever and ever, I mean. And I would argue that the Muslims should lead the way with this for a number of reasons. First, there had, like I said, I believe that, that slavery is the Ummah's great sin. And uh, it's interesting, I, earlier today I watched a video about uh, Genghis Khan and he was saying something along the lines of uh, that he was the scourge of God upon the Muslims for, for some sin that they'd committed because if they hadn't committed some sin, he wouldn't have had the power to come in and, and be so destructive in the Muslim world. Now, like, 
this quote automatically makes me think about the slavery issue. If Muslims were engaged in this kind of usury, because there is no more usury, and also the mutilization, mutilation of the cattle and humans are, beha are treated like cattle to be owned, how can a human be owned? This is really, really problematic and disgusting and horrific and evil. And we need to admit it to ourselves. And we need to ensure there are many, many Muslim communities that are waiting for the opportunity when governments collapse to reinstitute slavery. This has happened in Libya. It's happened in Syria. It's happened in Iraq. And it will happen worldwide if we are not careful. And we have Muslim leaders calling for the enslavement of Westerners, calling for the enslavement of non-Muslims. Big names. Some for entire civilizations stuck for Allah. This is so wrong and something to be repented of. And I will break down in another video why this is very dangerous for the Muslims who live in the West. Because it, it's going to potentially cause a backlash. Every, you know, it's like, I mean, a serious backlash. It hasn't gotten out yet, but when it does, it's potentially very problematic for the Muslimin. And because right now we are, we are seeing the powers that be, the devils, in the world, they are seeking to create a mass conflict between Christians and Muslims and to annihilate them per the Three World War letter of Albert Pike and Manzini. Um, and we've seen a movement. This is, this is a mass call, a mass slaughter. It's part of the, the Mahama in its greater expression to basically eliminate the majority of humanity and enslave the rest. This is another reason we must stand against, against slavery and enslavement because it has been, it is intended there are a number of communities hoping to enslave a certain percentage of humanity. Whoever survives gets enslaved in a high-tech manner. We cannot be among the hypocrites. You cannot, you cannot uh, desire to prevent something for yourself and your family that you desire to inflict upon others. That is mass hypocrisy. That's devilry. That is so unhealthy and problematic. And we have to understand that anything that we are desiring and that we're putting out there with our tongues and that we are engaging in repetitive thinking it has, a, it has an energetic resonance, an outflow, and some of these things will come back upon people. So, I mean, to curse with the tongue is to darken the heart and also to bring that curse back upon oneself. People need to be very careful. So, in order to eliminate, in order to kind of remedy, uh, remedy the past situations among the Christians, the Muslims, and the Jews, all people need to stand against slavery and enslavement and need to stand against tyranny, oppression, and enslavement, period, hands down. In every single way, need to stand wholeheartedly against this. That means to end all financial slavery, all sexual slavery, all exploitation of children, women, men, boys. It must end. There can be no more tyranny and oppression, no enslavement, now or in the future, ever again. That's the only way to remedy the situation and then to, to bring about to at least have the intention and make the efforts to organize th uh, all the resources, all of our efforts toward um, bringing about real justice in the world, where, where everybody has enough resources to, uh, to reach their potential as humans and has, has actually organic, high quality, nutrient dense food and pure living water and excellent clean air. We have to heal the ecosystems. We have to heal our relationships. And so by doing this, this is the only way to remedy the situation for the past. This is the only way to uproot vengeful behavior. Because the thing is, people are cultivating revenge in their hearts. They are cursing one another. They are waiting for a breakdown so that they can go in and hurt and harm groups, specific ethnic groups, specific religious groups, specific, uh, you know, like, like uh, age groups, specific, uh, you know, uh, you know all, all types of groups is what I'm saying. And this is highly problematic. We need to prevent this. So we need to protect, we need a group of spiritually mature humans to stand up in every way against all this devilry and one of the ways that we turn back the tide is we need to stand on actual truth and justice and mercy and compassion. We need to expand our hearts, expand our visions, and sharpen our critical thinking apparatus. We need spiritual warriors first and foremost. Once we have spiritually mature humans, then we have the spiritual caliphate comes online. 
And then we start to see different aspects of justice manifest in the world. Because if we do not have spiritually mature humans, people are going to behave in unjust ways necessarily. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and cut this short and, and end this right now. We will discuss this in more detail, inshallah. If, you, if there's something you would like more clarification about, something that you think that, that uh, we should give more detail, more examples, more practical tips, as to how we can come out of this, please put those in the comments and we will do our best to create other videos along these lines. But as far as a practical tip before we go, I would say that, that necessarily it's very important that we cultivate clear seeing and expansive heart. So we need to begin with ourselves. Am I being just with myself? Am I being honest with myself about my real feelings about things? We don't wanna be a hypocrite. You know, if, if you think, if you have argued, if you've made comments on YouTube about how Islamic slavery is awesome and it's way better than other forms of slavery, are you, are you making apologetic arguments because you desire to have uh, multiple women in your life from different ethnic groups, from different backgrounds? Are you hoping to humiliate somebody? Are you hoping to degrade somebody? Because I see these in comments. I see that, yeah, when we get slaves, we, it's, it's our obligation per dean to humiliate the other religion. I'm sorry, I, I, I apologize for getting worked up, but this is really highly problematic. This is one of the most devilish, ugly behaviors, and I see so many comments about it online. Um, Muslims, we need to be the best humans in the world. Not just because we say we're the best. Actually, that's, that's, that's satanic. To say we're the best based on no evidence. No, you ha we have to realize it and become the best because right now, what I see online, I see expressions of horrific humanity. This so looks so bad. You know, people who want to become Muslims or who might be, uh, you know, aligning themselves with Muslims, they see these ugly words and ugly behaviors from leaders, from Muslimin, and then they will want to, they will want to struggle against Muslims. And they will want to prevent, like, I, like, you know, I'll tell you what, if, if, if anybody is intending to enslave anyone that I love, I do not care, you know, what religion they're from. They will, they will, like, I will struggle against that full force, and so should you. So do not bring slavery upon yourself by calling to enslave others. That looks so horrible. So anyway, we're, we'll discuss this more, inshallah. But until next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuhu.